Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. It's day 19 of the League of Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, drop me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Um, today I kind of took it easy, went to the gym a little bit, but honestly, I'm just kind of uh, getting ready for my trip, uh, getting ready to pack and just trying to make sure that I have everything. Played around with my camera, I got a new lens for, for, so I'm just playing around. I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest, but, uh, but yeah, uh, that is basically my, my, my training story. So let's take a look at today's farm. Today we have 2563, count the number of fair pairs. Okay. So you're given two inches lower and upper, we turn the number of fair pairs, I and J, such that um, I, numbers of I plus numbers of J is to go to lower up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the first thing to do is that uh, you should sort the input, right? Um, sorting the input, uh, I mean, I, I think it's just like a good pre-processing step to think about. I mean, you, you can always do it, uh, of course. But you, you should ask whether you can do it. And the reason why you can do it is because even though there is this uh, deceptive looking I is less than J, um, it actually doesn't affect the answer, right? Like there is, um, I don't know, I don't know if I, I want to say it's symmetric, but it, it's just that like, you know, any, like if you have a pair, it doesn't, they just appear, right? Um, it doesn't matter whether, you know, uh, which one is I and which one is J, so, as a result, you can sort them for it, right? So let's sort right now. Okay, and then what happens? Well, I mean, I think then it just becomes, uh, yeah, binary search, right? You binary uh, for each number, you could do a binary search, right? Because um, if you have zero, then now the the smallest number is three, the biggest number is six, and so forth. And there are a couple of ways you can write this as well, right? Um, mm, Where's two and three? Why is that? If the lower is upper. Oh, oh wait, this, these are the index values. So two and three is 92. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it, really, right? Uh, there, there are two ways you can do it. I think one is just be really specific about lower and upper. But one thing that I don't think I, I probably did not do last time is this idea of prefix somewhere. This idea that, okay, well, let's, let's subtract out uh, for example, here, um, you can take the upper, you subtract out lower minus one, and then you get the inclusive of lower to upper, right? This is something that we, we've been doing a lot lately, and it, I, if I have to guess, that's probably not what I did in the past, at least not explicitly. Maybe the code t t turns out to be something really similar. So uh, so this time, let, let's try to do it that way, right? Okay, let's say we sort it, and once we sort it, then we can... Um, we're going to do a binary search, right? So here, uh, we have to be a little bit careful. Actually, I, I mean, I did say that the order doesn't matter, but of course you cannot, or you should not go backwards, right? For example, if you sort then uh, for the example one, you have going to be one, zero, one, four, four, five, seven, right? But you should not go, like uh, in this case, if, you, if you're if at the one, you should not go, oh, sorry, if you're at the five, you should not go back to the one because of symmetry, right? Because you assume that the one already got the five, so you don't have to double count. So you have to start at the current index. Um, I think that should be okay, right? So yeah, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, let's just say X in enumerate nums, right? So then now we want to get, uh, and this is maybe in this video, I'm not going into detail enough, but the idea behind binary uh, um, prefix sum idea, um, maybe it's not even prefix sum, but, but basically instead of writing, I mean, you can write it in two ways. One is that, you know, you have low, lower, da, 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 right? You have this thing, which is what they tell you. And then what happens is that, okay, you, let's say you're numerating on this, then you just subtract numbers of i on all sides. Technically, th th these are two equations, but you know, right? So you can do a binary search on um, where this is the case, right? Totally fine. That's probably what I did last time too. I think one thing that, as I said, I'm, that I'm playing with is just by going, okay, well, what is, um, you know, how many uh, numbers f for which this is true, right? Uh, for this is true. So then you get, you know, numbers of i, oh, sorry, numbers of j, we, we subtract 
numbers of i on both sides, right? And then you get this as one part. And then you subtract that out by uh, num sub i plus num sub j is less than or equal to lower, right? Lower minus one, actually, sorry, right? And then this, of course, is also a very uh, straightforward formula, if I can do it correctly, right? Um, it's going to be lower minus one minus num sub i, right? And then now, the, the discount uh, uh, the number of things that satisfy this subtracted by the number of things that satisfy this will give you the answer. And of course, I mean, the, the, I think the way that you can structure both things is very similar. But I think that is a way that I've been kind of playing more and more lately because um, I think it just, it, it's almost like an abstraction of modularizing uh, the ideas, right? Because then now, you, um, if you look looked at it another way, uh, you can now put this as a fu if you just define the function, you can put this there and put this there and then just subtract them where if you're trying to implement this, now you have to kind of um, have two cases and one function of two cases where here um, you have, well, two function call, but just one case. So I don't know, right? Okay. So yeah, so here maybe, yeah, uh, for for uh, for our reason, maybe I can even just say, uh, let's just say I have an F. Uh, of uh, the starting index and then the number x, right? So this will give the number of numbers that satisfies um, uh, num sub j is less than some um, some x less than or equal to, and um, and j is greater than you go to start, right? Uh, this is shows that so that we don't go to the left of it. Um, so we probably just said it, right? Yeah, and here then now we can probably use bisect left <coughs> on um, well on nums, but also on x because we're just given x, right? So wait, the number of numbers. So if I have, to, I always have to go through like. Uh, examples in my head to make sure it's right. Like the example that I might go over in my head is, for example, we have like zero, one, five, six, I don't know, five, whatever, right? Something like this. If X is equal to five, then we want to say the two numbers that are equal to two or, well, we want to say in this case, the four numbers, right? Not just two. And in this case, bi bisect left would only give us two on the index. So that's not quite right. So actually we want bisect right. So I was wrong because we want to be uh, less than or equal to, right? I'm going to have to do a start. I think that I always forget that bisect left does have a start, um, uh, or maybe it's called left or start or something like this. Uh, let me Google it real quick. Uh, it's like one of the parameters, but yeah, beginning, that's what they call it. So list, number, beginning, end. So uh, let me double check. Low, high is what they call it, actually. Okay. So yeah, low is equal to start, right? So that's basically it. And then we can just return this. I think that's basically the idea. And then now that we have this in place, we can say, yeah, uh, well, first we have to keep track of the total. And then we can just do, uh, like I said, F of I plus one, because we have to start from, you know, past the current index of, uh, let's see, right? So X is the num sub I. So then we want the upper minus, uh, so I'm just implementing this, right? So this is minus x, right? Um, minus f of i plus 1, lower minus 1 minus x, which is this part, by the way, right? This part specifically. And that's it. It should be good, hopefully. <laughs> if it's off by 1, I'll be sad. But uh, but yeah, uh, that's basically the idea. Uh, I I'm, wouldn't be surprised if I did the other way because I usually don't do it this way. Um, I don't think I've ever done it this way for this type of problem. Um, it's only more recently that I've been kind of thinking about it more aggressively in these kind of terms. So yeah, uh, what's the co complexity here, right? Well, I mean, this part is a linear loop and within each um, iteration of the loop, we do log n, two log n's, but log n uh, time. And yeah, so it's going to be n log n. I am curious how I did last year. I wouldn't be surprised if I just did, yeah. Yeah, so I did it more explicitly, right? Uh, like, or, or, like, yeah, like in this case, I just kind of implemented this and this. Um, and then we just kind of keep track and make sure that, 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we handled this to handle the left right part but uh, but I think either last time or something like this I remember someone telling me about starts or or uh, a low high kind of thing so yeah uh, so there you go we did do it a different way and yeah even this time I did it um, with this kind of this idea instead so this time today we did it a little bit different so hopefully that was good that was um, in a way that you know it's consistent though. I mean, if you kind of think about it, honestly, the code is not that different, right? But in this way, you're able to kind of be consistent about what you're at, um, what you're doing, which is kind of a nice thing and stuff kind of uh, f finagling with left, uh, bisect left and bisect right, which is not a big deal for this problem. But but when, once you start doing harder problems where you have like two or three of these ideas together, um, the easiest you could keep each component will allow you to solve harder problems because you don't have to, you have fewer things to debug, fewer moving pieces, fewer places to make mistakes, right? So yeah, um, so I mean, and you can see that like, you know, just want to add an extra point is that you can see that uh, this was not even a year ago. This was only half a year ago, right? Um, and at that point, I've been playing competitive programming for about 20 years now, more than 20 years, really, um, in case you're wondering. And why I say that is, um, why I say that is, you know, I'm still learning, right? I'm still trying, you know, figuring out new ways to be maybe slightly, just slightly better. So, and, you know, I, I, the code is way, way similar. You could even argue that it's the same, but the logic behind it is, a bit different and allows you to solve different things. So, you know, uh, if you have less than 20 years of experience in competitive programming, you know, you can, you still have place to learn, I think, for the most part, unless you're a tourist or Peter or something, a petter. But yeah, uh, that is all I have for today. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And yeah, stay good, stay healthy to your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.